When I first published the Pistop Extruder, I was hoping a couple of people would be interested. And it turns out that a lot of enthusiasts are trying it out. Several hundred people downloaded the designs. I estimate almost a hundred people have already ordered the parts and tens of people already built the extruder. Wow. It's only been about a week since I've released the Pistop Assembly video and I already received a lot of feedback. Thanks a lot to everyone who took the time to fill in the feedback form or provided feedback through other means. It helped a lot to understand the kind of challenges you're facing. I discussed with some of you over the last couple of days and I'm ready to take action to solve some of the issues. This video was getting quite long so I've separated out some of the parts in other videos. You've taken Amazon by surprise with all the orders and stocks are running out. When that happens, Amazon defaults to third-party suppliers which might charge more or have a high shipping fee. Or for magnets, it can default to other sizes, so pay extra attention to make sure you get the right parts for a reasonable price. Stocks are replenished from time to time, so if you can't find a part, you can wait a few days to see if it comes back in stock. Some of you are struggling to get the largest possible magnets that would fit. There's no need for that, especially as I couldn't find any suppliers in the US. The shorter 10mm magnets are fine. I've even tested with single 6mm magnets and the extruder still holds. You can even use two shorter magnets instead of a long one. If they're different sizes, place the longer one in front. If you live in the US, you also have the option to get the imperial sized magnets at quarter inch by half inch. You'd have to enlarge the magnet spacing with a quarter inch drill bit before starting the assembly. Be careful not to break the printed part. Some of you are having issues getting the z-axis to move smoothly. This can be caused by printer calibration tolerances or the filament itself or other printing issues. Especially when combined with the Igos drilling bearings which are more sensitive to misalignment. If you encounter these issues, I've made a separate video which you can find up here or in the description below. If you think that the fan duct is too fragile, as noted in the other video, you can try printing it without enabling detect thin walls. If you find it hard to remove the motor plate supports, you can use the version without embedded supports and use the slicer to generate supports. You can find this file under the all files folder. The smaller parts have a tendency to peel off in general, so feel free to add some brim if that's the case. Some people choose to print them at the lower 0.1mm layer height for a better resolution. Onto the fan cover, it can be that it rubs against the fan blades which damages the fan and can make a weird noise. If that is the case, then try spacing the cover a bit from the fan, perhaps using washers or spacers. I've also made a few minor changes for slicing in Cura in case you use that. Some of you reported parts peeling off during print, especially the pinda holder. For this I've extended the embedded brim on both the pinda holder and the cable holder. It can help to have a clean build plate or treat it with materials that provide better adhesion. There have been a few instances of the pinda holder breaking off. First of all, please make sure to not over tighten the screw holding the probe in place. There is a gap here to allow for the cable insertion during assembly but this gap is not supposed to close. Tighten the screw just enough for the probe to stay firmly in place. This should solve it, but I went ahead and added reinforcements to this round part so that it gets printed filled in and not hollow, hopefully reducing the risk of it breaking. I've also changed the shape of it to help printing the overhangs. On the other hand, it being completely filled also makes it a bit less flexible, so try not to over tighten the screw. These changes are available now. There have been some comments on the shroud. This is the part that tends to melt first and you can print it in ASA, ABS or other more heat resistant materials. The shroud is almost identical to stock with a minor change to compensate for the blower fan slight angle change. If you already have a stronger shroud printed in SLA or other exotic materials then you can keep using the one you have. Another note was the limited part cooling on the back side. For this I'm looking into adapting another shroud that can reach further towards the back, but that is not ready yet. There have been two main issues reported with the stock frame. First there are two screws on the right side of the frame, holding the power supply in place which can crash into the carriage. 
For this I made a slim down version of the carriage for the stock frame which should remove this issue. You had problems with the Z calibration where the cable holder crashes up against the top of the frame. For this I made a change to the cable holder where I changed this section which I will now attempt to break off without breaking the entire part. So you can now break off this section for it to stop crashing into the frame. You can further clean up this area. You may need to trim the top left Z end mount if the carriage crashes up against it. I don't have the stock frame anymore so I can't test this myself. The Vistop extruder did not work with the Mark 2.5 S printer because it would not trigger the X end stop. For this I made a modified version of the carriage that triggers the end stop. You use a 10 or 12 mm screw to further adjust the triggering point. Lots of you are using the multi-material unit and have encountered some issues. I made a few adjustments on the multi-material levers and added more detailed instructions on assembling and adjusting the sensor in a separate video. Check it out up here or in the description below. One popular feature request was support for the Dragon hotend. I'm happy to announce that the Pistop extruder now includes a version for the Dragon hotend. The main difference is that it's now missing these two fins. It has seen very limited testing and I don't even own a Dragon hotend and therefore I cannot test it myself. The Dragon I've seen that Alex Bauer tried out did not fit very well despite it supposedly being the same dimensions as the V6. So we're still tweaking the dimensions. Consider it an alpha version because it's likely to change. For now if you're having trouble getting the radiator in, you can heat up the radiator and press it in between the printed parts. I might provide different variations for you to try out. You should be able to mount both the V6 and the Dragon in the same Dragon version of the Pistop, but the V6 will likely fit better in the original V6 version of the extruder. Another popular request is support for the Mosquito hotend. That requires more work and I will have to get hold of one, so I plan looking into this in the future, but it won't be very soon. For some other feature requests, swapping the extruder block is not happening yet. You can add connectors next to the heater cartridge and the extruder thermistor for this. I know E3D already provides hot ends with connectors like that. Problems are that you still need to have the wires held in place, make sure the connectors don't risk heating anything, and readjust the life Z leveling. Also, many connectors are only good for about 50 mating cycles or so, after which they start losing the plating and risk catching on fire. Then you may have the volcano block, which requires different part cooling airflow. I've done extensive analysis on this, and even though technically there are solutions for all of these problems, the extruder is so packed that I don't think it would be feasible to try with the current axis layout. I do have a solution in mind which involves significant changes for both the X and Z axis, where you pretty much replace all the printed parts and possibly redo the wiring. This would take many months of work and I'm not sure how many people would even consider that kind of modding for a relatively small benefit, at least for now. I haven't looked into the geared extruder option much, I might do it in the future if there are a lot of requests. There are many other requests. While I'm not taking action on them, I'll be keeping an eye on the most popular ones. As far as assembling time goes, you should expect it to take anywhere between 2 and 7 hours, with most people reporting 4 to 5 hours. You can also assemble the bulk of the extruder off the rods, if it's easier for you, and only later mount it on the rods. Depends on your preference. All the updates covered here are already available on the Bill of Materials page, you will now find more nested folders for the various setups you might have. Choose the one that best describes your setup. New and updated parts have version 1.1 imprinted on them to distinguish from the previous version. This is all I've got for now, it's not perfect but we're getting there. I've been using printers for a few years now, but I know there's still much I don't understand and there's a lot more to learn. I'll keep experimenting and you keep providing feedback on the form or on my Mihai subreddit. Otherwise I won't be able to help. On Reddit you can also upload photos and videos which can help me better understand what's going on. I'll be posting more updates as they come up on my subreddit as well as on my Mihai Designs Facebook page. So make sure to join not to miss them. 
Again, thanks a lot for your help and support. If you got value out of this video, lightly touch the like button and feel free to be awesome.